Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate an alternate method of dynamic meshing in ANSYS Fluent 21R2. Uh, this method is applicable for moving mesh simulations uh, for tetrahedral and tricells. Now in the example case here I've got a simple 2D case, circular domain uh, with tricells and a moving object here. And the challenge with this is that the, as the object moves you want the size distribution of the mesh around the object to remain reasonably well preserved and of course you want to maintain uh, quality uh, and sizing in the far field and that can be quite challenging. So uh, I've got a rigid body motion set up here with a UDF and uh, let's just preview the zone motion. Okay so I've got some time steps and it's just moving around in a circular fashion. Now the remeshing settings this is set up in the traditional way so I have to specify uh, methods and there's other parameters here for min, max, length, scales and uh, skewness. So let's have a look at the mesh motion and just as an aside if you do this please remember to save your case before you run preview mesh motion uh, as it will adjust the mesh and you need to get back to where you started. So let's put in a uh, reasonable number of time steps and see what happens. You can see as the object is moving uh, the mesh is stretching and uh, remeshing and you can see it's putting in quite a lot of effort the update has slowed down as it attempts to uh, deal with the uh, the mesh and generally the quality would reduce and we would be relying upon remeshing to uh, fix those uh, cells now sometimes that can result in uh, severe quality issues or indeed negative volumes and problems like this so it can be quite challenging to set this kind of problem up to ensure that uh, we have uh, a good quality mesh and our simulation continues to run. Okay, the second issue is that as the object moves around, we tend to have a degraded size field around the object. And again, it's challenging to, to maintain that. Okay, and there you can see it's got to a point where we've got a negative cell volume. So typically I would have to go back in and adjust some of those settings. Um, an alternative way of dealing with this uh, influence is something called unified remeshing. So I'm just going to load up the case again. So let's get back to the start. It's just loading up now. Let's redisplay the mesh. Okay, so this time in my settings here, I'm going to use this unified remeshing option. So I'm just going to check that. And you can see the first thing it does is it removes all of the methods uh, and parameters that you would otherwise have to tweak and adjust to ensure that your dynamic mesh succeeds. What it's doing is it's um, replacing all of that manual entry with uh, an automatic procedure that occurs in the background and it's selecting uh, the right methods for you based upon your, your mesh. So you no longer have to worry about all of that setup. So I'm just going to click OK and let's do the same here. We're going to preview the mesh motion. It does give you a little warning here, an information dialog box that's just telling you that it's it's only applicable for tetrahedral and tricells. Uh, so I'm just going to click OK because that's uh, that's applicable to my case. Preview mesh motion again. Let's uh, let's put in more time steps here. 200 and hit the preview button. And you can immediately see that the um, the motion is uh, it's much faster, it's coping uh, with the mesh deformation and most importantly it's maintaining a really nice size field around the moving object. Okay, and uh, it's completed 200 time steps using the same time step size here, I haven't changed anything and uh, it's preserved the quality really really nicely together with that size field in the vicinity of, of the object and in the far field. So that's a, a nice, easy way of setting up these dynamic mesh simulations in Fluent 21 R2. Just to remind you, head to remeshing, all you need to do is press unified remeshing. Uh, now, before I conclude the video, uh, you've probably seen there is an advanced button here. Generally, we don't need to go into these settings. It just enables you to adjust the maximum permissible cell skewness. Uh, generally, the default setting is fine, so you probably don't need to adjust that. There's also a checkbox here which controls whether or not it attempts to retain 
the size distribution around the object. And again, really the purpose of using this is, is that you do want to retain the size distribution. So again, you would generally leave that, that switched on. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and bye for now.